This is problem 141.m. It's on page 45. A shelf is being designed to hold crates having a total mass of 1,840 kilograms. Two support rods, like those shown in figure P141, hold the shelf. Each rod has a diameter of 12 millimeters. Assume that the center of gravity of the crates is at the middle of the shelf. Compute the stress in the middle portion of the rods. Okay, so the mass of the shelf is taken to be negligible, at least the problem statement didn't say anything about mass for the shelf, unless it's added in with the crates. In any case, the mass they gave us was 1840 kilograms, so let's jot that down. The diameter of the rods, 12 millimeters. Uh, let's see, and then there's a figure on page 141. Uh, I'll draw a part of it because I need a free body diagram. So our solution what we're going for, what we're supposed to solve for, is the stress in the center of the rods. Now, why in the center? Well, let's discuss that in a minute. First of all, let me draw part of the free body diagram. Here's the shelf, and the rod is attached to the end of the shelf. In fact, there's two rods, front and back. You should reference the figure if you haven't looked at it yet. Uh, anyway, at the wall, let, let me call this point A. At the wall, there will be a reaction force AY and reaction force AX. So I guess since I've got the reaction forces there, I don't have to have the point name anywhere anymore. Uh, there will be tension in the rod, and of course there's weight on the shelf. So here's the shelf, here's the rod. So um, why do they ask for the, the stress in the center of the rods and not at the ends? Well, the reason for that is that at the ends, the stress may not be evenly distributed throughout the rod, just like at, at the opposite end. It's only at the center that you could expect to find the same stress at any cross-section in the rod. So you'd expect to have uh, normal stress, of course, because the area we're going to look at is perpendicular to the uh, tension. Another way to say that is that the surface normal, if we were to cut the rod here, the surface normal would be in the same direction as the force applied to the member. So we know we expect to get some kind of a normal stress. Essentially, the equation we need to fill out is this one whatever that tension is, over the cross-sectional area. The cross-sectional area of the rod is pretty easy because we've got the diameter of the rod. The tension, what about the tension? Well, that's a reaction force, right? That is statics. And so we have to solve for the reaction. In fact, the only reaction we're really interested in is that tension. So there's a couple different ways to do this, but probably the easiest way is to sum moments about this point. And then the distance, let me call the distance from that point to, you know what, let me put it down here because it'll make the figure more clear. Let me call the distance from A to the weight L2. And if I sum moments about A, of course the reaction forces at A go away. And that's the whole point of summing moments at A. But the weight force will cause, let's see, it'll cause a negative moment if I take counterclockwise to be positive then I'd have a minus L2W to take care of the moment caused by the weight. But this tension force is also going to cause a moment. So how do I account for that? Well, all you need is a moment arm from A to the line of action of the tension that is perpendicular to the line of action. So that would look something like this. Now, I don't know that length yet, but let me just call it L1. So then, if this line is perpendicular, if L1 is perpendicular to the direction of action, or the line of action of the tension T in the rod, well then all I need to do is multiply those two together, and I'll have the moment of the tension about A. Now that's causing a positive moment, so that would be plus L1T. Now of course the sum of moments is zero. There are no other forces acting, so there's, there's nothing else to add into my equation. But now the question is, what is L1? Well, uh, first of all, let me solve for the, the tension in the rod, because that's what we want. The tension in the rod would be the ratio of L2 over L1 multiplied by the weight. I'm going to call that equation 1, because I'll come back to it later. Now, how could I calculate L1? Well, you know that the angle here is 30 degrees. You also know that the overall distance, according to the problem statement, is 1.2 meters. So, notice this is a right triangle where the hypotenuse is 1.2 meters. All I need is the base side. So you should pause the video for a moment and think whether this is a sine or a cosine relationship. 
So I'll give the answer. The answer is it's a cosine relationship because the side I'm interested in is touching the angle. So the relationship between this length, this 1.2 meters, and this length is cosine. So cosine of 30 degrees would be equal to the adjacent. That's uh, And you know what? I've messed up. I keep talking about this side. This is the cosine side. But I couldn't care less about that, right? I'm interested in L1. So hopefully you got it right. There we go. So I'm interested in L1 versus the that 1.2 meters. So L1 over 1.2 meters, that would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, so that's a sine relationship. And fortunately I did use sine in my solution. I just, sometimes I work this uh, more in my head than off my sheet. So anyway, L1 then would be 1.2, and here's a shorthand, sine 30 degrees. So don't let that throw you off because frequently I'll, I'll just use S for sine and C for cosine. Alright, <clears throat> plug this into your calculator. Of course the 1.2 has units of meters and what you find is this is 0 0.6 meters. So now going back to equation 1, let's continue with this. Let's see, it turns out that they set up this problem nicely for us because L2 is just half of 1.2 which is 0 0.6 meters and L1 is 0.6 meters, so T would be 0 0.6 over 0 0.6, that ratio is just 1 times the weight. So the tension is just equal to the weight. Now the weight would be the mass times the acceleration of gravity, and so that's 1840 kilograms multiplied by 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, if you plug all that into your calculator, you'll find that that is... Um, uh, well, there's a number you'll get for this. I did at, at this point. What I did is I realized. Well, wait a second. The tension that the rods are experiencing. There, there are two rods. So I've got to take this this tension. This is the total tension in both rods. So if I want the tension in a single rod, which is what I really want, because I'm going to calculate the stress for a rod, then I would need to take the weight over two. Okay, because there are two rods supporting the weight. So anyway, plug all this in, uh, the 1840 times 9.81 over 2, and you'll find that it's 9.025 kilonewtons. Now we can calculate the uh, stress. Now let's expand this just a bit. Of course, the area based on the diameter would be pi d squared by 4. So this is 4 over pi t over d squared. Okay, now 4 over pi, that's just numbers, the tension is 9.025 thousand newtons. The diameter is 12 millimeters and that has to be squared. Now you have to be careful here, the 2 is going to square the 12 as well as the millimeters and so the dimension is squared. So a newton per millimeter squared is actually a megapascal. Need some space, so let me get rid of the moment equation since we've used it up. Okay, so we've got 9.025 kilo megapascals divided by 144, basically. So you plug all of this in your calculator, and what you'll find is that it's 79.8 megapascals. Where I've gone ahead and uh, use this as 9,025 divided by 120 or 144, okay? Because 12 squared is 144. That square works on the number and the units, so be careful about that. So there's the stress in uh, each rod. So both rods are going to have that stress. The other way you could have done this, of course, is just realizing there's two rods. You could have multiplied this area by two and used the tension just equal to the weight instead of this. So that's what 18.05 or so. But it's just a factor of two. It's up to you where you put it.